Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Bao. In the last video, we talked about how we can use a pair of linear transformations, one of them being a right inverse to the other one, to talk about how a vector might project onto a plane or even a line um, in various ways. Let's use the what we what we talked about in the last, last video then um, here in an example, in a concrete example, just dealing with in R2 itself. All right. First of all, here's the question. We're going to take a um, vector. Suppose it's negative 2, 3 coordinates, the coordinate of the tip and the coordinate of the tail is 0, 0. And we're going to project it onto a line. This line is determined by a vector 2, 1, going in this way from the origin. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to project it on here, but in which kind of a way? There's different ways you could do it, or you can do it via what kind of angle is it going to make with the ground? It depends on how the light's coming down. Let's suppose the light is coming down um, uh, right here at a 45 degree angle to the ground. Okay, so it's coming in this, this direction right here, and it's casting that shadow. Then the question comes, what is this projection? What's the length of that shadow? So this is what we're going to do. We we think, OK, the line that we're projecting through is kind of like a light ray. And that's going to be the kernel of F. So watch the other video to see how that comes into play. So the kernel of F. And um, then the ground is going to be the range of G. Hmm. So we need to figure out what F and G are, because then what we do is we take we reverse the order, g of f, and then we simply plug in the vector negative 2, 3 into that, into this function. OK, so you plug in negative 2, 3, and out comes what we're after, the projection. That's basically it. That's all we do. So we just have to figure out what, what would work for g and f that would, to, to make this happen. Well, if we think about having a matrix for f, and we think about the column operations matrix that would give us, uh, that we would use in order to find an acceptable right inverse with G. So the column operations matrix that gives us Smith normal form. We just kind of picture that. We don't know what the, what matrix for F is, but maybe we can build the matrix for the column operation, um, for the column operations. So for one, the first column is just G itself. Okay, it's just two, one. The next column would be like the kernel of F. Now the kernel of F, hmm, how do we figure that out? Well, we, we realize that um, the kernel of F is gonna be you know, along lines like this. It's gonna be a 45 degree rotation from two one. So all we did, gotta do is rotate two one by 45 degrees. You can do that via a rotation matrix perhaps right here. And how could we come up with it? If we distribute the square root of two over two to all the entries, we could see simply that this is like the image of in the column interpretation of E2 and E1, or E1 and E2. So um, particular one, zero, where's, or, uh, where does it go? It goes to square root of two, square root of two. Uh, zero, one, where does it go? It goes to, it goes over here, two, negative square root of two over two, comma square root of two over two. That's, that's the image. So we can build this matrix pretty simply. We get that matrix for rotation by 45, and that'll tell us where to put two, one. So we run it through, we end up getting this. Now, realize that um, this is this vector just rotated, but we just need to know, get something that would span this line. So we can take any multiple of this we like. Why don't we just take 1, 3 itself? Because this is a scalar multiple of 1, 3. We just divide by that scalar, we just get 1, 3. So we can imagine the kernel of f being 1, 3, and the range of g being this. Um, where C itself is like the uh, is the is the codomain of F. So we can think of F as going from maybe like D to C. And so then G runs the opposite direct, the opposite way. So F goes this way and G goes that way. Um, okay, so this is like the range of G right there. The matrix for G is just simply two one. That's pretty nice. Wow, okay. So we know the matrix for G will be two, one, but now we got to find a matrix for F such that we get, um, such that we get the identity matrix. Now this identity matrix is going to be, well, let's think column interpretation for this guy coming in. It looks like G comes from here, 
right? Um, and notice you have one thing coming in, like E1 coming in, that's it. So it looks like R1. So really the identity is really gonna just be the identity matrix on R1, which is just one, okay? It's just a single number, it's a one by one matrix. Okay, the identity matrix that we want, this is just a one. So, and um, that means F right here is going to be something of this sort, all right, of uh, this size. You have one in and one out. Okay, it's just gonna be a row of, of, some, of some kind. So it's a row vector with two entries, such that when you dot it with this guy, you get zero because you want um, because you want this guy to be in the kernel of it. You know, you know what? Just by inspection, you kind of imagine how do you make something dotted with this to make zero? You could like swap these and make them one of them negative. I mean, you could go like um, maybe like negative three one. Would that work? Because negative three and then the one, you can kind of imagine just swapping and making one of them negative. So um, it's kind of like the idea of taking um, negative reciprocal with slopes or something. But you could kind of look at it that way. There are various ways, um, other ways of, of getting something in general. But for now, we're just going to do it by inspection. We say negative 3, 1 would work, right? Negative 3, 1 um, would work as something that would cast this guy to 0, all right, if you plug it in. So it looks pretty good so far. The only problem is when you do this matrix multiplication, we need to get a one in order to make this happen. So we'd have to rescale F, multiply it by something to make this one. Well, let's see, what would we need to do that by? Negative three and two would be negative six plus one would be a negative five. Um, to make a one, you'd have to divide by negative five. There we go. So divide, so that should give us one now. All right, so this is our F right there. And that's our G. And then we just go for it. We just put these on the other side. We can put the negative one fifth just out. It's a scalar, just put it out, out to the side here if we want. And then put the G, switch the G and the F right here. But you can put the scalar way out here, it's all right. So we have two, one, and then we have negative three, one. We just switch the order of the matrices, scalars over there. We multi, okay, so we have these, and then we're gonna be plugging this in, but we're plugging this in using a column interpretation of matrix multiplication thought of as a function. So when we input this vector, we input it as a column, negative two, three. Run this multiplication and you will get that number, right? You will get this vector right here um, at that coordinate position. All right, so, um, so good. So we can run this, maybe we'll just, uh, we'll take, I'll take this matrix product right here. So we get what, six, so we get six and three, which would be um, nine. All right, so hey, that actually gives it to us. Then you can put the nine as a scalar on the other side if we want. So negative nine fifths times the vector two, one would give it to us. Okay, um, there we go. So we can just say, okay, there we go. There's our answer. And we have the projection right there. When we can multiply this in, that would be what negative and be uh, negative eighteen fifths um, and negative nine fifths would give you that coordinate point right there. Thanks for watching.